you, to bless each of you. It's now my privilege to introduce this evening's speaker, Dr. William E. Harbor. Dr. Harbor is a native of Piedmont, Alabama. He is the first of eight children in his immediate family. And after completing high school, he applied to Jacksonville State University, but was denied admission. You see, it was 1960, before the Civil Rights Act, before integration, and Dr. Harbor is African American. So he entered Tennessee State University and there joined the Student Central Committee of the Nashville Christian Leadership Council. He participated in sit-ins, stand-ins, picket lines, marches, and was arrested several times in Nashville. After violence ended the Congress of Racial Equality, CORE, Freedom Riders in Alabama, Mr. Harbor joined the first group that left Nashville to continue the ride. He was arrested in Birmingham, beaten in Montgomery, and rescued by the National Guard along with Dr. Martin Luther King and church members and other students when a mob tried to burn the First Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. He continued on the ride, was arrested in Jackson, Mississippi, and spent 49 days in Parchman Prison. When Dr. Harbor was released from prison, he found that he had been expelled from Tennessee State University along with 13 other students. After winning the court case, he was reinstated at Tennessee State University to continue his education. His work experience includes social, social studies science teacher for several years and was selected to serve in President Johnson's Great Society program, the War on Pro Poverty for 15 years. And he also worked as a management analyst for the United States Armed Forces Command in Atlanta, and he retired from that position in 1998. Dr. Harbor received a bachelor's degree from Tennessee State University in 1964, a master of science degree from the University of Utah in Salt Lake City in 1973, and did further studies at several other universities. On April 25th, 2008, the Tennessee Board of Regents unanimously voted to grant the awarding of the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters to the 14 students expelled in 1961. And on September 18th, 2008, Mr. Harper received his honorary degree, the Honorary Doctorate. He remains active in the Atlanta chapter of Tennessee State University Alumni Association. He, had, he was chapter president in 1987 and also vice president in 1998. He was voted alumnus of the year three times by that chapter. In 2006, the alumni chapter honored Dr. Harbor by naming their scholarship the William E. Harbor Academic Scholarship. He is married to the former Doris Washington of Bainbridge, Georgia, and together they have one son, Marcus E. Harbor. Please give a hearty welcome to Dr. William E. Harbor. Good evening. I think uh, President Mann got a copy of my speech already, so I won't be here too long. I see everybody's fanning, and I've changed my speech from one, two hours to one hour. <laughs> then a few minutes ago, when it started thundering, I changed it back to 15 minutes. <laughs> so don't worry. I won't be here long. Thanks, Mr. Thanks President Mahan, for those kind words. I also want to thank you and the board for inviting me here, and also the students, to let me speak today. Let me tell the audience that I'm serious about that. I will not be here for approximately 15 minutes, so, so don't worry. I hope it. Hope it uh, the rain hang off for a few minutes. We'll be notified by the guards. May I introduce my wife and Dr. Mann said, Dara Saba, my son, Marcus Saba, and all my sisters, relatives, and friends. Also thanks to my dear friend, Freedom Rider Hank Thomas, who was on the burning bus in Anniston, Alabama, 
and also my dear friend who Rick Rip Patton was a freedom rider from Tennessee State University. President Mann, when I received your call several months ago, I'm sure you felt the hesitation in my voice. After a brief discussion of my background and past history, I agreed to be the speaker today. Let me explain a couple of reasons to our graduate class why I think I was chosen. As President Mann mentioned, first I was born in Piedmont, Alabama, approximately 12 miles from Jacksonville State. Thanks to one of your professors, Pete Conroy, who constantly reminded me that I'm still an Alabama homeboy. Next 50, year, next 50 years ago, when I graduated from high school, as Dr. Mann said, I applied to Jacksonville State and refused, refused admission. There were no minorities at Jacksonville State during that time. I never thought I'd be standing here before you 50 years later. My next choice of schools was Tennessee State University in Nashville, where I applied. While at Tennessee State, as Dr. Mann mentioned, I participated in the sit-in movements, freedom rides, lunch counters, demonstrations. And at the height of that movement, it was estimated that over 60,000 college, university, and high school students participated, and over 4,000 had been jailed. By the end of that summer, many of the lunch counters, swimming pools, restaurants had been desegregated. America still struggled to implement the ideas of justice and equality for all as set forth in the Constitution of these United States. As was mentioned in 1961, U.S. Supreme Court banned segregation in the interstate transportation facilities, buses, bus stations, and trains. However, the federal government was not enforcing that order. In the spring of 1961, the Freedom Wide was organized to test the violation of that law and challenge the government to carry out the Supreme Court order. The test was to travel from Washington, D.C. through Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and into New Orleans. Thirteen riders, seven blacks, and six whites left Washington, D.C. on May the 4th on two buses. The ride was to be completed in 13 days. They had very little trouble until they got to Anniston, Alabama on May 14th, Mother's Day. The angry mob attacked the bus. The bus eventually left the station and was attacked again outside the city limits of Anniston. It was fire bombed and completely burned. The riders were rescued and taken to Birmingham, Alabama but a second bus had already been attacked. Because they had been substantially beaten and the reluctance of the police department to protect the riders, the, it was discontinued. While the rest of the nation breathed a sigh of relief that the Freedom Ride was over, we, the students of Nashville, Tennessee, agreed to continue the ride. We were advised that some of us would probably be killed, uh, even all of us may have been killed. The South was not ready to see segregation change in the bus station transportation system. However, we felt that the Freedom Ride was stopped because of violence. Then our movement would be set back for years to come. 10 students Two whites and eight blacks left Nashville, Tennessee on May the 17th and arrived in Birmingham 
where we was arrested. Two nights later, we were taken from jail and transported back to the Tennessee line in Utmore, Alabama, and put out on the railroad track at 4 o'clock in the morning. A car was dispatched from Nashville, Tennessee, and took us back to Birmingham, where we spent two more days in the bus station. They eventually let us leave Birmingham and go to Montgomery, where a mob greeted us at the bus station. The mob beat us over 15 to 20 minutes before the police arrived. Several students had to be hospitalized because of the police refusal to provide protection for us. The President of the United States federalized the National Guard. The next stop was Jackson, Mississippi, where we were immediately arrested. And I spent 49 days in prison in Parchman, Mississippi. During the summer of 1961, Freedom Riders, there were 436 Freedom Riders that went to prison in Mississippi. 50% of the riders was white, 50% of the riders was black. 75% of the riders were men, and 25% of the riders were women. 40% were between the age of 18 and 21. I was only 19 years old at that time. The riders came from 39 states and 11 countries. On September 22, 1961, the Interstate Commerce Commission issued an order to take down the Jim Crow signs from all bus stations and rails throughout the South. We, the Freedom Riders, had won. During the month of May this year, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Freedom Ride. We celebrated that in Anniston, Montgomery, Jackson, Mississippi, and also in Chicago. Additionally, we received a proclamation from the President of the United States on May the 3rd, 2011, which states in part, and I quote, today we remember the Freedom Riders for their sacrifices they made in pursuit of rights we now enjoy. They showed that people working together across the backgrounds and boundaries could hold America accountable for our high ideals and bend the art of justice towards history and justice. They showed that young people have the power to generate a movement for equality and steer the course of our nation. Because of their effort, and the work of those who march and stood against injustice. We live in a country where all Americans have the right to dream and choose their own destiny." End quote. I'm still amazed at the changes in social justice and also technology that have taken place over the last 50 years. We have gone from pay phones to cell phones, from typewriters to computers, from handwritten letters to emails, Facebooks, and Twitter. I marvel over those changes. However, sometime my mind reflect back 50 years ago especially last year when I sat across this field and Tennessee State was playing Jacksonville State in a football game. <laughs> JSU ran the football up and down the field, touchdown after touchdown. Tennessee State could not return the ball to the 50-yard line. Then I said I remember a time when that wouldn't have happened. Then I began to think about the major changes that have taken place in this great university, my heart filled with joy. Because of those changes, my sister Mary is in the audience, graduated from Jacksonville State in 1973. 
My brother Jerry graduated from Jacksonville State in 1978. My sister-in-law Agnes graduated, got a master's from Jacksonville State in 1979. Then I thought about all of that. It made me feel better about losing the game until I met my brother Jerry in the parking lot and he asked me, was that your A team or your B team? <laughs> I could only say to him, did you see I have a band? <laughs> Graduates, I know you are ready to leave these hallowed halls to pursue your new career, to find a job, to buy that sports car that you have been dreaming about. And I'm sure that President Han won't mean you to remind you that put your alumni dues on that list and also start paying back your student loan. I am constantly asked by students what is left for us to do. You all have made all the changes. When I hear that question, it reminds me of the answer a noted civil rights leader, Reverend C.T. Vivian, gave to a news reporter. The reporter said to Reverend Vivian, you have been arrested over 15 times. You have been nearly beaten to death in Selma, Montgomery, and in Mississippi. Why don't you stop marching, take a break, go home to your family? Reverend Vivian re reply was, one of my children was born with weak bones in his legs. The doctor prescribed braces for him to wear. Many times they became uncomfortable and my son requested me to unloosen the braces. I hated to see him in pain but if I, if I had released those pressure on my son braces, he would not be walking today. So today, I ask you to keep the pressure on because the freedom ride is not over. When approximately 7,000 high school students drop out of school per day, the freedom ride is not over. When the teenage pregnancy rate over 75,000 per year, the freedom ride is not over. When the unemployment rate is 9.2%, the freedom ride is not over. When the poverty rate is over 15%, the freedom ride is not over. When in, in a nation as great as ours, 15 million children live at or below the poverty level, the freedom ride is not over. Today, graduates, I ask you to look deep inside your heart and really search for what you think is right. I believe you will find a willing spirit that will lead you to help make this world a better place to live. It is my hope that you will keep the pressure on because the freedom ride it's not over. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Harbor, for those remarks and for your contributions to freedom and to justice in all of its forms. We applaud your life's work. Tonight, we have a number of bachelor degree recipients who are graduating with Latin honors. They're identified by the gold cords that they wear. Students graduating summa cum laude have, a, have achieved a grade point average